Hello there, it's Chris here from Becker's Models. Got another build review today. It's Hobby Boss's 148 scale Hellcat, the F6F3 late version. This is a much maligned kit and for good reason. It's got lots of problems, lots of issues, but there is some hope to be had. So stay tuned, I'll go through the kit and I'll tell you why you should get one of these. The Grumman Hellcat was a carrier-based World War II fighter plane used by the United States Navy and the British Royal Navy alongside the Vought Corsair. With that big familiar Pratt & Whitney radial engine and its rugged design, it proved to be the dominant air superiority fighter of the Pacific Theatre, finally able to compete against the Japanese Zero and ending up downing more Japanese aircraft than any other type. There were two main variants, the Dash 3 and the Dash 5 which had a more powerful engine, a different cowling and windscreen arrangement. Most of the Dash 5 Hellcats were finished in overall gloss sea blue. Over 12,000 Hellcats were produced and the aircraft certainly made its mark on history, even though I think it's a little bit ugly. Hobby Boss first released this kit in 2009, hot on the heels of its sister company Trumpeter's 132 effort, and then followed up six different boxings that included the Mark I, the Mark II British, the Night Fighter variants, the early and late Dash 3s, and the definitive Dash 5. Both kits in 132 and 148 scale have had a bad reception in the modelling community due to some pretty drastic accuracy problems. Two big ones, really. First, the fuselage cross-section is far too fat, making the cockpit, instrument panel, and seat too wide and the shape of the forward can canopy completely wrong. Second, that famous Hellcat smile on the front cowl is really off. It's not deep enough and it's too round. Nor are the cooling vents open. It just doesn't look right. As for some other issues, well, there's no seat belts, there's no gun barrels, the centerline fuel tank's a wrong shape and doesn't have any straps, and there's almost no rivet detail anywhere to be seen. It's like they sort of gave up halfway through designing the kit. Now, it sounds like you should just stop here and bin the kit and be done with it, but actually, it makes up for this by generally well-fitting throughout without much drama. It's got a folding wing option that no other kit has, recessed panel lines, some really well-detailed control surfaces, and non-rivet det non detail, and it's a very cheap kit. There's really only one recent competitor, and that's Eddard's Hellcat, or you could try the much older Hasegawa. So straight off the bat, let's be clear. If you want an accurate, well-detailed, and well-engineered 148 scale kit of the Grumman Hellcat, well, get the Edward. But beyond the accuracy problems, how does it build? My first overall thoughts is this is not a Tamiya kit, but it's pretty good. It's pretty solid overall. You can see there, I've just got the main assemblies uh, taped up. There's a few things glued together, like the inside of the cockpit, but Overall, I've only just put this together and fitted a few of the parts. Okay, I'll break it down and we'll have a closer look. When it comes to fit, the fit is actually quite good. Some parts need adjustment. The wings in particular, which I'll explain uh, shortly separately in a bit, uh, are the only real issues. Uh, the rest of the parts all press fit in. For example, I've had the landing gear, I'll just take the canopies off here. The landing gear, if I turn this over, is just press fitted in, as is the fuel tank. Okay, so that's really good fit, and those wheels are just press fitted in as well. I can take them apart. The flaps, okay, are also just fitted in there like that. And the fuselage to wing join, it's actually a center fuselage piece here. That's really, really good. The main fuselage hards, I'll just press that together with my fingers. As you can see, the seam will disappear. So you may not even need putty with those. So overall, yeah, the fit is quite good. You just need to adjust all the all the parts. It's not like Tamiya where you just cut it off the sprue, put it on. You've got to cut it off, maybe do a little bit of sanding, maybe do a bit of fettling, and just be careful with how much glue you put on. But apart from that, pretty good. Let's just take this apart and go through the instructions step by step and I'll show you the parts that uh, are real critical that need to fit quite well and some parts that Hobby Boss have included that you're never going to see. So just, I'll just stand by here while I take some parts off. Let's start with the engine assembly. As you can see, there's just a simple plug there that fits into the fuselage like that and that's just press fitted in okay 
Hobby Boss has you building all these parts that go inside here, which if I turn this over, you'll never see. Uh, it's on step one. I'll, I'll show you just closely here. All right. That whole barrage of parts there, you don't need to fit them at all unless you really want to glue everything in. And then right down the bottom here, there's another part that fits on the back of that engine assembly. You'll never see it. It's not necessary. Don't worry about it. Let's break it down a bit further and we'll have a look at the cockpit. So we've got the main fuselage here. It's going to be a nice fit. I'll just press fit that in and I'll just show you how this goes together. There's two main slots here, two main yeah, slots for these two tabs for the cockpit tub. And that's just, you don't even need to glue this in. It, the, the engineering is that good. It just falls out like that. Put these aside. So the cockpit tub is quite detailed. It's got several parts to it. There's several sub-assemblies. You've got the main pan here with the instrument panel. Oh, sorry, it doesn't have an instrument panel. And then you've got the actual tub itself. I'll just zoom in and we'll have a closer look. So that's the main tub bottom there. And on, on the back face here is all those parts Hobby Boss wants you to put in, but you'll never see. So just leave them off. Fits pretty good. Details all right. Nothing really to write home about. So the main tub is this one. You've got the rear bulkhead with the headrest and the instrument panel here. This was a little bit fiddly. I would suggest you open up some of the holes here and use a slow setting glue to get these side panels in. The details okay. As I mentioned, uh, first up, the this is very inaccurate, so it's not exactly um, you know going to be perfect. Um, the putty is there because I was a bit too adventurous with my sprue cutters taking off the nubs on the sides of the seats, and I took away some of the plastic. So that's all that's there. Yeah, the thing to take note of is this back bulkhead shape here is a little bit too fat. You need to trim a little bit, only a little bit with a sanding stick to get it to fit flush in between the fuselage halves. But apart from that, not bad. Moving on, we've got the wheels. Parts that I normally don't put together, but I thought I'd do wheels down for this build. Uh, usual usual thing with most um, plastic. I'll see if I can get the wheels out. Come on, out you get. Uh, there's a seam line running down running down there and especially where you've got the chrome bit of the uh, of the oleos that compress that's going to be uh, chrome uh, there's a seam line there you need to get rid of but apart from that not too bad uh, when you're removing the seam line between the two wheel halves you will lose a lot of detail so mainly maybe consider getting a set of resin wheels but these are pretty good press fit in like that so you don't have to worry about glue and as I showed at the start uh, the these lugs here at the top, they fit in really nice uh, with a lot of authority into the center cockpit. See if I can get that out. Okay, so you've got a, a nice big sturdy post to go there. Okay. There we go. Nice press fit. It's fairly secure. You might, might want to add some extra wiring details there if you want, but out of the box, it's pretty good. There's a few covers to go in there that I haven't glued on yet because they're different colors. But yeah, landing gear is pretty good. Moving on, while we've got the center fuselage here, uh, this was quite easy to put together, just these parts between here and here. We've, I've still got the outer wings on. You've got the flaps. Okay, the flaps can be adjusted uh, all the way down or all the way up. The fit is very tight, so you might want to uh, take some meat off those posts there just to, to get them to sit just right. But for uh, flaps down, it's pretty good. Uh, yeah, nothing to report there. The parts here glued on together well enough. The only issue is going to be when it comes to final assembly is there's a panel line going right along here and if you can see there, I'll zoom in, but there's a row of not rivets but screw lines there. Now they're going to be destroyed when you try to fill that seam or you might just want to fill them and be done with it. The fuel tank that goes over the top here will cover most of that but on Hobby Boss's part, let me just put that in, Okay, so you, some of it will be concealed, but on Hobby Boss's part, they should have stepped molded that to the next panel line so you could keep this detail. It's going to be very tricky to keep that. And for a, someone doing their first 148 scale kit, not very good at scribing or putting in extra detail. Like I said, these are screws, not rivets. Yeah, it's a bit. It's about only one of the downsides of the kit. It's underneath. You're not going to see much, so don't be too concerned about it. Next part of the assembly is putting on the tail wheel and the arrestor hook. No dramas there at all. I'll pop the cockpit back in to show you it just sits on those those tabs and we'll put the fuselage halves back together. 
as you can see it's just aligned there with those tabs and it all squeezes together nicely so let's have a look at the canopies thankfully unlike my wildcat the hobby boss wildcat where you couldn't put the canopy to the rear this one can be fitted the main sliding canopy can be fitted as normal or to the rear which is what you want to do so you can see the detail of the cockpit there the front the front canopy I've trimmed that a little bit it needs a little bit more trimming but it looks to fit okay and that should be a nice fit so one of the main problems with this Hellcat kit is the Hellcat smile is not quite accurate but if you're not into accuracy and you're more worried about fit and engineering this is pretty good uh, what I've had to do however to get the cowling to fit is this tab that fits into the lower fuselage it's a bit too big and in fact this it will press fit on but it won't stay there so just something to note but um, yeah, it's not too bad it's not it's lacking detail behind the cow flaps but overall as a one-piece unit don't have to worry about alignment issues or any sort of problems it works going on to the engine the engines okay it's the details all right I would add some ignition wires here the assembly is not tricky but the instructions have different marked tabs for how the engine parts go together from the back there okay just take your time and don't commit to glue until you're exactly right that all these things are aligned up and the exhaust ports are in the exact position the uh, front cow the, what do you call it the ignition housing or the transmission housing it clicks on there like that for a press fit and the props pretty good too there is a little bit of flash on the prop on along the edges always are on these things okay so you might just need to get the sanding stick out just to make sure it's just right and that's just a one piece assembly with the, the spinner just glued on top, which I've done there. One of the issues I have with the Hobby Boss kit is the way that the outer wings fold into the inner wing section. Now, the kit has obviously been designed to be built with the wings folded. The fuselage fit in here is very, very good, so there's no complaints there. However, the spars that they want you to use that just come out of the wings there to slot into the um, the inner wing for the unfolded wings is really not sturdy enough to keep it well not even to have a secure joint um, it's obvious that they've designed the spa the other spars that, that are, have a 90 degree angle for when the wings are folded up are much sturdier so I had to make a few improvements and it's quite simple all I had to use was this sheet styrene here and I made a few reinforcements so on the both sides there okay and then on the wing itself, there was only a small amount here that I could I could uh, find that I could hide a piece of styrene because once that's closed, and I'll see if this works on camera for the first time, slide it in, okay, you get this tiny little jut here. It's a complete butt joint and it's only like three millimeters wide and it's got no strength whatsoever. But with even that little piece of styrene underneath it, it gives a much, much more secure joint. Okay, um, on the top side there, you have to still, it's still a butt joint the whole way around, okay, but you can get that enough to be as close as a panel line. So just with a little bit more shaving there, I can get that right, but that is much more secure than what it was. And the other wing is actually, for some reason, is a lot better. Uh, I'll just slide that in and click. See the wing's holding on by itself. You, you, you can't do that with, with the, um, with just the kit parts if I just finagle that a little bit put a bit of pressure on and then we get a nice tight fit okay so I would definitely recommend that for your kit when you're building it just a final note about the wings you'll notice that they've already pre-drilled the holes for the rocket stubs so if you don't want the rocket stubs there you need to fill them in which is a pain the other thing is the gun barrel port gun barrel ports where are the gun barrels there aren't any so you're going to have to get some aftermarket one or use some um, some styrene tube and drill them out because there are no gun barrels. The flaps, as I mentioned, are posable here, but the ailerons are, are not. They're fixed in there. So if you want to cut them open, you can, but you'll, you'll get rid of these little tabs as well. Uh, no rivet detail. It's really stark. Okay, you can see there's no rivets. It's just a few panel lines there. I would consider adding rivets to, the, to both of those. The kit comes with the centerline fuel tank and it also comes with rockets and bombs. I've elected just to put the, the fuel tank together. The It's not bad. It fits to the bottom quite well. I'll just put it onto the bottom fuselage for you here. They've already got the holes pre-drilled. There's nothing for you to worry about. Okay. 
There you go, fits in there nicely. I'll turn it over, see if it stays on. Yes, it does. Okay, the only issue with that is in the center of this here, just make sure that that's trimmed flush. If it doesn't, there's a it, it won't fit to the to the top here and this won't press in. There is some detail lacking, however. I'll put you can see it on the box art, but I'll also put up a reference photo. There's some straps missing here, okay? Uh, that keep the fuel tank on, on there somehow. I would suggest using some older um, photo etch seatbelt parts or something like that to replicate that, or some very thin uh, styrene strips. It's quite a noticeable detail, so you might as well put it on. So, after building the Hellcat, why should you even consider this kit? Well, if you can live with the accuracy problems, it's still an inexpensive but large and well put together kit for both the beginner or an advanced modeler. For someone wanting to move out of 172nd scale and into the middle 148 range, it's a pretty good setup. For a seasoned modeler, it makes a great practice to kit to flex those modeling muscles, adding details like rivets or wiring on the engine or super detailing up the cockpit, or for being a bit more adventurous with your weathering skills. And that's why I'm going to finish this one, because Hellcats are some very interesting paint schemes and weathering opportunities to try out. Thanks for watching. I hope this build review helped more than just a plain sprue tour that you normally get in other reviews. And I hope you stay tuned for more reviews like this on my channel. Leave a comment on what review you'd like to see next. Subscribe so you can actually watch it when it comes around. And hey, have a great day and happy modelling.